Hi, Ashley here with hearthookhome.com, and today we are going to work up the Smock It To Me <laughs> beanie that is in the Smock set that I have available for free on hearthookhome.com. We are using Tunisian crochet in the round, which means that we have a few specific tools that we need. We are going to work up the beanie together because it will help you to learn how to do these decreases at the crown of the beanie, which is the same that we do in the mitten here. First things first, we need a double-ended Tunisian crochet hook. This is a size six millimeter. I did get this online. You can find these um, available as a set. I did include a link in the pattern itself under the materials. You will need two contrasting colors. You don't have to have two contrasting colors, but it shows it's, that's how we get this lovely pop um, of color here in between. So you have a color A, which is going to be the color that you see the most, and then color B is going to be the color that's on the inside. So you will see little pieces of it po poking through, but it's not going to be as noticeable. This I'm using Snuggle Puff. It is a beautifully soft yarn that I thought would be excellent against the face for a beanie. So for Tunisian crochet in the round, you do need to have two balls, whether that's different colors or the same color. Let's go ahead and get started. To start our beanie, we need to start with a chain of 76. So we're just doing a chain like you would with regular normal cro crochet. I know that this chain looks really big um, and it just will because when as we are working, we're gonna use some stitches here along the brim and it's really going to help tighten things up a bit so your beginning chain may look really big and you're like holy moly my head is not that big <laughs> I promise it'll work out so what I like to do especially when I'm working the first round of Tunisian crochet in the round is I like to put a stitch marker in this last stitch that I made so I'm going to pull my hook out and I'm going to just put a stitch marker in that back bar right there of the last stitch that I made. And this is going to help me when I come back through um, at the beginning of my first row or at the end of my first row. So what we're going to do is we are going to make sure that the chain is not twisted, number one. So I just pull it back through, find the first one, there we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna flip it over like that and I'm going to insert my hook in that first back bar right here. Okay, so let's get situated. I'm gonna put my tail down, out of the way. My goodness, okay. So now I've got my hook inserted into that first chain, the very one, first one that I made, and it is not twisted. The chain is not twisted on itself. Now I'm just going to go through and I'm gonna pick up a loop in each chain all the way around. So I'm just gonna keep pulling up loops onto my hook all the way around. You're just gonna pick up as many loops as you can fit on your crochet hook. And when you can no longer fit any more, then we're gonna start knocking them off the back end. Okay, I'm getting quite a few here, but not all, not enough. I mean you can knock them off the back end whenever you're ready but I like to put about half of the beginning chain or half of a row. doesn't really matter if it's the beginning chain or the beanie's body itself. I like to get about a half a row on there before I start knocking them off the back end. It just makes things go a little bit quicker and if I try to make sure to go almost exactly half a row then it just feels like the pattern is going faster to me. It's probably all in my head. but All right, so I'm starting to get to where they're bunching up down here, which is fine. Just make sure that they don't start falling off the opposite end. Kind of bunch them up as much as you want. Just keep adding as many as you can before they start falling off that other end. You will notice that some crochet hooks, some double-ended Tunisian crochet hooks, there are ones that are six inches long. This one I think is a nine incher. Um, they, they come up to 12, 14 inches long. So depending on the project and how, you know, how large the beginning chain is, you could fit a lot of stitches on there depending on how long your hook is. All 
All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and start knocking off the other end over here. So I'm going to kind of push them over down to this end so that I can look at it from this direction. So this is where I've been pulling up these loops and now I'm gonna knock them off on the other end. And this is where your other ball of yarn comes into play. So I've got this other ball here and I'm gonna position it just like this. So this is my return pass and this is my forward pass. I do notice as I'm crocheting these that if you keep the balls separated, it, it is, a lot easier to keep the yarn from tangling up here as you work your yarn back and forth and you twist your hook around. So the very first loop that we pull up with yarn B, this is yarn B, is going to be just one loop through the first chain, just like that, one little loop. And now for the remainder of the pattern, the entire pattern, you're going to yarn over and pull through two loops yarn over and pull through two loops, two, two, all the way. So we're gonna just keep knocking these off, kind of move my stitches up closer to the hook end. When we get to where we're running low on stitches here, you wanna stop when you have two loops, no fewer than two. You can stop at three, four, five, whatever, but you need to make sure that you always leave at least two. So this is one loop of your backward pass, yarn B, and one loop of your forward pass, which is yarn A. So now that we've knocked all of these off the back end, it's time to turn our hook back around and we're going to pick up more stitches. So make sure that you're using your forward pass yarn, this one right here, right, coming from this side. Move that out of the way. And we are just going to continue pulling up, oops, sorry. We're going to continue pulling up all of these loops to the end, all the way around. Okay, so as we are approaching the beginning, this is why we put in this stitch marker right here, because it really helps you to see where you're pulling up that last loop of this first row. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to tell. You're like, okay, is that a loop? Is that a loop? Is that, where is it, you know? So keeping that stitch marker here just for this purpose alone is well worth it in my opinion. So first I'm going to go ahead and knock off all of these stitches over here, and then we're going to end the row one and start the row two. So I'm just gonna push them all down to the end. I'm gonna turn my hook so that I'm using my color B yarn again, or my ball B, and yarn over, pull through two, all the way around. Remember to always leave at least two loops on your hook. Two is fine, three is fine, four is fine. L fewer than two is no good. So now I'm gonna push my hook back over, kind of like a typewriter, right? An old fashioned typewriter. So let's pull up our color A yarn again. This is the one that we're using to pull up our loops. Now I'm going to pull up a loop in the last few stitches here. So here's one. And then here's one. And then the last loop that we will be using to pull up a the last chain is the one with the stitch marker in it right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove that stitch marker because it doesn't need to be there after this point. Perfect. So pull up a loop there. Okay, so now that is the final stitch of row one, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're gonna make sure that it's not twisted around on itself, right? So you have two yarn tails here, one for color A or ball A and one for ball B. We're just gonna keep those kind of just hanging down here. And I don't like to weave these in until the very end because it helps me to um, see where my seam should be, right? As I'm working the entire beanie. So I'm going to make sure that my stitches are not twisted or anything like that and now i'm going to find the very first loop that i pulled up right here do you see how there's this knot here this was my very first chain and coming out of that is the first loop that i picked up you can kind of see a hole in the center there just right there right so we are going to start round two 
using two knit stitches. So what we are doing is we are creating, let me show you my mitten again, we are creating this ribbed look. So there's two knit stitches and two purl stitches and two knit stitches and two purl stitches. And these are all basic Tunisian stitches. I have tutorials for these, um, you know, a dedicated tutorial for the Tunisian knit stitch and a dedicated tutorial for the Tunisian purl stitch, but we're going to do it here together. If you wanna go ahead and practice um, like a washcloth or something, that would be fabulous as well. So I'm going to hold my yarn A I'm going to find that first loop that I pulled up here. I'm going to go through the center of it and make a knit stitch through the center, pull up a loop. That's my first knit stitch of round two. Now I'm gonna go through the next one and do another knit stitch. Good. Now I'm going to do two purl stitches in the next two stitches. So bring it to the back, go into that first one only, first vertical bar, kind of flip it around, right? Bring it to the back, go through that next horizontal bar, or vertical bar, let your yarn kind of pull back, and then pull it through. We'll do this together a little bit, but like I said, if you need to uh, watch a dedicated tutorial for the Tunisian purl stitch, I do have that available as well. So we've done two knits and two purls. Now we're gonna do two knits Lovely, and now we're going to do two purls. Bring it to the back, kind of hold it a little bit, go through that vertical bar, release, and let the yarn kind of rotate around that hook and now pull up a loop. I like to make sure that my purl stitches, I don't want them to be nice and like too tight, but I don't want them to be super loosey-goosey either. So to the back, I feel like that could be a song, a wedding song. Through that vertical bar, release it, let it flip around to the back, it's almost like doing a full 360. Find the next stitch. We're gonna do two knit stitches in the next. One, two, and now two purls again. To the back, under that next vertical bar, release and do a full rotate. Good for the wrist. Two knit. And two purl. I'm going to do this all the way around the entire beanie. And so when we get back around, at the end of this round two that we're doing and at the beginning of round three, our knit stitches are going to line up with the knit stitches and our purl stitches are going to line up with the purl stitches. So when we get to the end of this round two, I'll make sure to point that out with you. I'm gonna go ahead and complete this round. Okay, so I've gotten quite a few stitches on here. It's not quite, uh, maybe it's about half, I'm not sure. But I'm going to go ahead and start knocking them off the back end. So I'm gonna push them down, flip my hook around, and I'm gonna use my backward pass yarn to yarn over, pull through two. And like I said, for the entire beanie, you're yarning over and pulling through two. The entire thing. And I do like to leave those yarn tails there because it tells me where I started and where my ends of my rows are, and you can kind of just follow, follow the line straight up. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. Remember, never have fewer than two loops on your hook. Push it back, and we're now we're gonna pick up even more. So you can tell that the purl stitches have these little bumps on them like this, and the knit stitches still look kind of straight and tall purl always look like there's a horizontal bar here. So that's how you can tell the difference. So I know that I just did two purl stitches. So now I need to do two knit stitch, or yes, two knit stitchers. And I'm just going to complete this all the way around to the end of the row. 
Okay, so I have just finished round two except for these last two stitches. So you can see that I've got these last two vertical bars right here. Those are going to be purl stitches. So we have two knit, two purl, two knit, two purl, all the way around. These right here are two knit, so I'm going to do two purl in these last two stitches. And this is the end of round two. So now I'm going to start round three, and I'm looking at these first two stitches. See how I've got my yarn tails here? So I know that this is the beginning of my rounds. So I have these two knit stitches here, and then two purl stitches here, and then two knit stitches here, and then two purl stitches here. I am just going to continue all the way around until I have five rounds total of knit in the knit, purl in the purl, knit in the knit, purl and the purl all the way around until I get to where I have five rows total. So one thing that you can do that might help to make sure that you are um, counting your rows correctly is you could put a stitch marker in the base of round one because it can kind of get hidden down in there so sometimes it looks like oh I've only done one row no well, technically that's two because you've got this one down here and your stitch marker is showing you that this is the first round this is the second round and then you're gonna have three four five so I'm going to continue making my brim and the brim of our beanie is going to be five rows total so I am almost halfway done with the brim it is important to note that for this pattern on the mittens we do ten rounds because I wanted them to have a bigger a chunkier um, cuff on the mittens than we do on the beanie itself. So do 10 rounds for the mittens, do five rounds for the beanie. I'll do a few beginning stitches with you here. So I'm going to knit in the knit, knit in the knit, and purl in the purl. And this, I do like to pull my purl stitches a little bit tighter, and this right here this ribbing that we're creating for the beanie base, that is what's going to make our chain kind of shrink up a little bit. You remember how at the beginning we were like, holy moly, that's a huge chain? It's really not. Once we start cinching these, um, the width of these stitches up, cinches right on up, and it should be just a great size for an adult-sized head. If you do need to uh, change the size, 76 chains should be about 21, 22 inches by the time you know we're done making this brim. So if you need to adjust it for a smaller head or a larger head, you're going to change the beginning stitch count. So instead of doing the chain 76, you would change it by four stitches. So you could do 72 or 68 or 64, just depends on how large or small you need this to end up. When I do my half rounds, I always like to end on the same so I'm, I'm always ending with two knits or with two purls and I keep it consistent so that every time I come back, like you can tell just by looking at this that these are the purls and these are the knits if you're familiar with the stitches, but I just like to remain consistent to where I always know, okay, I always end on knits before I push my stitches to the other end and start knocking them off over here. And remember, with your B yarn, you are always, always, always yarn over, pull through two. Even when we get to the smock section of this beanie, the smock stitch part, you're still gonna be yarning over, pulling through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, literally for the entire thing. So I'm going to continue working on this brim until I have five rounds total, and then we will work on the smock stitch together. Okay, now that we are finished with our five rows, and I know that I have five rows because I marked it down here, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Lovely. So these are five rounds, or rows, of the ribbing stitches where we've got the knits and the purls. Now we are ready to move on so that we are using a new color A, and we're going to start our smock stitches. So you're going to need to grab your color A, your new color A, and this is going to replace this ball over here as our forward pass. So I'm going to prep that, get that set over here. I am going to go ahead and clip this yarn from this ball. Do not clip your return pass, the one that's on the back end here. We're only clipping this front um, yarn here. I'm going to leave a decent 
long enough tail so that I can um, weave in ends well. And I am finished with this ball of yarn. So, in order to start the actual smock stitch, I'm going to grab my yarn here, and you can go ahead and remove this stitch marker at this point, not necessary any longer now that we know that we've got our five rounds completed. So we are going to grab this new yarn, okay? We are going to kind of hold it back here so that if it was attached to that same ball, right? So hold it back here kind of with your fingers. Now we're going to do the smock stitch. So the smock stitch, I do have a dedicated tutorial for the smock stitch. If this is difficult for you, you might try that um, first. But we're going to pull our hook to the back. We're going to find the first two knit stitches. So these two in between my thumbnails right here. I'm going to go under both of those and I'm going to hold with my, my finger over here, I'm holding this loop out of the way. And I'm going to pull up a loop just like that. Now, I've got a couple tricks that will help here in a little bit. So let's first, let's go to the back here and we're going to just tie a little knot, just a placeholder, okay? So those are the two yarns, the one that I just fastened off and the one that I just attached. I'm just gonna tie a very simple little knot that we can undo. Now, before continuing on, I am going to take a stitch marker and I'm going to mark these two stitches together. Just like that. And that is going to help us locate those stitches when we come back around to do the beginning of the next round. So what we're going to do now all the way around is we're going to smock stitch. We're going to bring our hook to the back, hold it with your index finger, go under the next two stitches. So you're always going to do two knits and then the two purls and then the two knits and then the two purls and you're doing those two together. Okay? So yarn back or yarn to the front, under the next two, hold it with your index finger and pull up that loop. Next two, pull up that loop. We're gonna do this all the way around. This is all that there is to the smock stitch. Pretty easy, right? Once you get the hang of it. Two vertical bars, pull up that loop. Two vertical bars, pull up that loop. And since we're going through two, this round kind of goes by pretty quick. I think the rest of this beanie really does go quick, in my opinion. Okay, I'm almost to where I can't really maneuver the hook very well without finagling it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my hook so that I can start knocking them off the back end. And just like before, we are always going to, pull that down just a little bit, we are always going to yarn over, pull through two. Now with the smock stitch worked in the round like this, you can see that your, your yarn kind of crosses over like this. You wanna make sure that you're always doing the first, this one first, the one that crosses over, and then the next one, and then the one that crosses over, and then the next one. So you sometimes pull through one, you kinda of have to go like this and pull through that first one so that on the back side, they look like little crisscrosses little X's. Do that one first. And now do this one. Now do this one first. And now do this one.
See how these look like little X's on the back end? And on the front end, they look like this. That doesn't look like much yet, does it? It will. Let me pull some yarn so I'm not having to fight it. And never have fewer than two loops on your hook. So now that we've got our two, I'm going to push it back over. We'll turn my hook back around so that we can continue pulling up these loops. Okay. Smock stitch around the rest of the beanie. These are my last two. So I've got these purl stitches here. These are my last two of round five remaining. Now, before I go ahead and start the next round, I'm going to knock these off the back end again. Aren't these colors gorgeous together? I love them. I contemplated doing a gray instead of this camel color, which is actually the fawn colorway. I contemplated doing a gray, which is the bunny colorway, but I thought the tan would really, since it's so mellow, it would really offset the brightness of the, the Muse hand-painted yarn. And it's so remarkably soft, it's going to be excellent against your skin, on your face on your forehead. Of course, if you need to use a, a different worsted weight yarn, that's perfectly fine. I used a Brava worsted weight for the green and gray. That is the pattern photo. And that's just a traditional worsted weight yarn acrylic. Okay, now we have our two loops again. I'm gonna turn my hook back around. Okay, so Let's move this yarn, all of our yarn tails. We have four yarn tails now total. We have the two from the beginning, and then we've got these two from where we changed colors. I personally like to leave all four of these on the inside of the beanie or down at the bottom and just kind of keep them pulled down and out of the way. This is also, like it's obvious a little bit, um, where your join is from the beginning. Um, and you will kind of be able to tell after you're finished with the beanie. I mean, not too bad. We'll, we'll weave in the ends to where it's not noticeable. But this helps me to remember again that this is where I started. Okay, so when you are working on the smock stitch, this next round is probably the most difficult. I mean, it's not hard, but you have to kind of look at where your stitches are. So you are going to pick up two loops again, but since we've already done the knits and the pearls, now we have to pick up these colored ones, right? So you can see this diagonal is the right side, and then this straight up and down one is the left side. So it's going to be these two, which means that it's going to be these two which means that it's gonna be these two. So we are going, let's go ahead and remove the stitch marker. Those are the two from where we started, right? Let me get situated here. This is always the most confusing part for me. Okay, so you can bring your yarn to the front of your hook. We're going to go under those very first two where that stitch marker was, right here and right here. And we're gonna smock stitch. Okay, that's where that stitch marker was. You can see where I tied my yarn here. So here in a second, I should probably tie it more securely. So I'm going to smock stitch in the next two, this diagonal one and the one that's going more vertical. Now I'm gonna smock stitch. This one tends to get a little bit hidden. As you can see, as you pull up this loop right here, it pulls on the other side of it to where it's kind of like, where'd it go? You just have to kind of finagle down in there. It is kind of nice that the yarn is a different color since we're using, you know, contrasting colors so that you can see exactly where you're supposed to be pulling up that loop. See how this one got a little buried? We're gonna just pick that guy up just like that and we're just gonna continue smock stitching. Now, before I get too far, pull that a little bit tighter. Before I get too far, I'm going to lay this back down and I'm going to kind of tighten that up just a little bit. I'm going to use this yarn tail at the end, at the very end of the beanie, to kind of cinch up any holes or any where the color kind of jogs a little bit. And since we're working in a spiral, it, it's going to jog. But it's just that one spot. So that will be, you know, where you put it at the back of your head or whatever. Um, honestly, you probably won't even be able to tell once we're all completely finished. So yarn to the front, find that hidden loop, 
and that loop right there. And this right here, what we're doing, we are going to continue doing this in a spiral all the way till we get done with the beanie, until the very, very end. So I am going to just continue doing this until we've got as many rows as stated in the pattern. I should have looked at that before I did this part of the video. But I'm just going to continue working in a spiral. And now that we've gotten that um, the first stitches, the first smock stitches of this round right here, now that we've got those, when you get back around this next time, you're just going to continue in that same method that we are doing right now. And you will not need to um, find anything or mark anything with your stitches ever again. So just continue working in a spiral. Get as many stitches on your hook as you can. And then turn it around and go the opposite where you pull them off the back end. Yarn over, pull through two, that thing. Um, and just keep on keeping on. And so when we have as many rows as needed, I'll hop back on here on the video with you and we will finish this guy up. Not too bad, right? I hope you're enjoying it. All right, here we are finished with my 32nd row of the Tunisian smock stitch and we are ready to do the top portion of the beanie which will cinch it up and we've only got a few rows left, so that's awesome. I wanted to show you how I count my rows. Here's where we started. Um, and of course we had the five of the ribbing or edging stitches before we started the smock. So we know that this is number six right here. So this is six, seven, eight. And if you just go straight up, then you can just count by twos. So we've got six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, right here. And then this is 32, the one that would be pulled together. So you want to make sure that your hat at this point is around eight inches tall from the very bottom to the top here for an adult size beanie. And we are ready to finish her off. So now we are going to start with round 33. This round is very similar to what we've been doing the entire time, except we're not gonna do the yarn under like we have been. We're just going to find the next two stitches and pull up a loop. And since we are not adding that extra yarn over, we're actually decreasing now. So we're going to cut, cut our stitch count this round in half because we are no longer pulling up that extra loop. So I'm just going, I'm not yarning under or anything. I'm just inserting my hook under those next two stitches that I would have used anyway if I was doing the smock, right? And I'm just going to pull up all of these loops as normal. Okay, I'm getting to where I can't really fit a whole lot more on my hook, so I'm going to knock them off the back end real quick. Again, yarn over, pull through two like we have been in the entire time. And look at this, I just looked down and it doesn't look like a little donut now. <laughs> it's got the hole and that looks just like a little donut, making me hungry. Okay, so yarn over, pull through two all the way around. It might be helpful before I get too far if I put a stitch marker in the one, the last one that I did, so this would be a yarn over here, my diagonal yarn, and then these start just going straight up. So I know that this is the first one from this row. So I'm just gonna put a stitch marker there. I might not need it, but you never know. And if it takes two seconds to put it in there, it could save time later, just do it and get it over with. And then if you don't use it, you don't use it, right? A precautionary marker. Okay, so now that I'm back here, this one technically is a yarn over from, it's the very last one, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use that and use this one as the very last of that round. So let me go ahead and knock these off the back end and then we'll be ready to start the next round. So now for the next round, for round 34, what we just did was round 33. You can see how it's already starting to come in a little bit. What we're going to do now is we are going to do just a regular Tunisian simple stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this stitch marker again. I'm just gonna put it in this one right here. 
the last color A loop that we picked up just because and now we're going to do Tunisian simple stitch around, which means that you're just pulling up a loop, one loop in the front vertical bar only, all the way around. Right, so now we've done our round 34, which was the Tunisian simple stitch all the way around. See how it's continuing to get a little bit smaller? You are going to notice a little bit of a difference in the pattern of the um, stitches, how it's not the smock anymore. That's okay. We're going to do another round of decreases right here. So now I'm going to take my first two stitches right here, and I'm going to do a decrease in there. So let me remove my stitch marker. I'm going to go under the next two vertical bars just like this and pull up a loop. No yarn under, no nothing. I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Next two vertical bars. Pull up a loop. Next two. Pull up a loop. Okay, so now we are finished with round 35. See how it is definitely taking on that top of a beanie look, right? And we went from all the way out here to all the way up here, and now it's got that nice little rounded top. If you're going to make this into a messy bun beanie, this is the point where I would stop, and all you need to do to finish that off is pull this through that one, and then just slip stitch around the entire thing like you would normally to fasten off with Tunisian crochet. Since I'm going to make this a full closed top beanie for myself, I am going to continue with the next portion of the pattern. There's only like one and a half rows left, technically. So move this little stitch marker down out of the way. What I'm going to do now, I'm essentially going to get rid of color A right so what I'm going to do in order to do that is I'm going to slip my hook under as many of these loops as I can and I am not picking up any loops I'm just going straight through these just like this right and so now I'm going to yarn over with my color B and just pull through two like normal. And do this all the way around and see how my color A is still all the way back over here like I could go ahead and cut that now if I wanted to which I will here in a moment but continue until you get all the way back around to where you dropped color A and like I said you, these stitches are getting more compact and closer together so you might not only be or you might only be able to fit a handful of them now on your hook before it starts getting kind of cumbersome now that we are here, so we completed this around that entire row. Now we're going to pull this final loop through so that all we have is color B on our hook right here. So this is going to be the very end of our pattern. Let's go ahead and move this down. I'm going to clip this yarn. Um, somewhere over here just enough to where I can use it to kind of cinch up anything that I need to I'm a big cincher upper in my weaving in of ends this is how much I have left after making one mitten and the beanie I think I'll have enough to make the other mitten with this one um, skinny yarn which is pretty amazing so color a get that kind of out of the way we probably end up putting her on the inside here in a little bit but okay we are ready for the final row what we're going to do is we are going to double crochet two together so traditional regular old let's go ahead see how she's kind of like coming from the back here anyway i'm going to go ahead and pull her inside just like this 
and get her out of the way. Okay, so we're going to double crochet two together all the way around. So we should have 20 stitches. Let's go ahead and count. We should have 20. Honestly, if you have 21, it's not the end of the world. Nobody will know, especially when doing all of these decreases here. It's kind of like, do I have 20? Do I not? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I don't know if I counted this one as number one or, no, or not. So either I have 19 or 20, honestly, it's fine. Um, just make sure that you've got around that so that one, when we do these decreases, you should have 10, you could have nine, you could have 11, it's fine. We'll just weave in the ends really well and we'll be good, we'll be good. Okay, so I'm going to go through these stitches like I would if I was making a knit stitch, okay? I'm going to complete half of that double crochet and then I'm going to yarn over, go into the next one, complete half and then pull that together. So here we've got that, right? So we went into this one, so now we're gonna go into this one. Complete the first half of a double crochet. Yarn over, go into the next one. All the way straight to the back. And pull through three. There we go, we're just gonna do this all the way around. So you can see that I went into this one here, so now I'm gonna go into this one first half of a double crochet, yarn over, next one, I like to go through, you can kind of see how there's this tan color, there's one here and then there's one here, I like to go through those two because I feel like it doesn't, um, if I went all the way down around this one down here, I feel like it would leave a huge hole there so by going through kind of the center of them it kind of alleviates that or you know helps from creating a big hole there if you wanted to you could complete this with the color a instead you would just make sure that that is the loop that was on your hook here i like it with the color b because i think that it goes well with the bottom of the beanie as well. Honestly, it's up to you, whichever you want to do, whichever you think looks better. It's your beanie after all. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of take a look at what I've got here. This big color A loop right here, it looks kind of out of place, but I think that's just the tail from where we, you know, where it's not woven in yet. So I'm going to remove the stitch marker. Let's take a look, see if we need to do any more stitches. It looks like we went into that one. That one looks like that is a loosey-goosey there, so I think I'll just do a regular double crochet in this one, because I already went into that one, but this one looks like it's the only one that doesn't have anything going into it, so I think that was my odd man out when I counted a bit ago. So I'm just going to do a double crochet, just so it doesn't feel all alone, you know? I hate to be that that lady to my hat. <laughs> all right, so we are finished. Now we are ready to go ahead and weave in all of our ends. I'm going to take a pretty decent line um, length of yarn here for my yarn tail for my color B. Look at my pretty little donut, isn't that cute? <laughs> all right, so I'm just going to pull this straight on through. I'm not gonna do a knot or anything because we're about to use our yarn needle to really cinch all of this up. So let me thread my yarn needle. And now I'm just going to pull up a loop. I'll just kind of do this, right? Around the entire thing. So I came out of that one, I'm gonna do this one, kind of rotate it down and come through this one right here. one, this one, and when I kind of pull that, it kind of pulls it all nice and pretty. All right. Okay. 
And that messy bun that we talked about earlier would be so easy to do with this pattern. So look at how cute that is all cinched up nicely. I'm just going to go in and weave in all of my ends securely. I will probably take this to the inside of the beanie. I might go around these stitches here just to kind of cinch up any smallish holes I've got up there. Oops, that snagged another piece. There we go, look at that, looking all lovely and symmetrical and just nice. Okay, let me come through there and then I'm gonna go to the inside here so that I can weave it in without it looking obvious right so here's the inside it's kind of pretty how it's got all these little pops of color right these just these little diagonal lines kind of pretty so now I'm going to weave in this end I'm going to weave in this end I'm going to weave in the four ends from my beginning that I constantly um, talked about <laughs> in the first half of this video um, but I'm going to go ahead and weave in all of these ends and I am finished with my beanie let's just take a look real quick how pretty that is I just love the color play of it I love this pattern I hope you love it too and I will show you, I'll model it for you here in the thumbnail and on all of my social media platforms. So I will talk to you soon. Thank you for crocheting this beanie with me today. I look forward to crocheting with you again.